Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Did Shakespeare. My name is Cassidy Cash. Continuing in our series on Shakespeare and clocks this month, we are exploring one traditional aspect of the Tudor knot garden that was just as functional for William Shakespeare's lifetime as it was beautiful. This week, we're asking the question, did Shakespeare have a sundial? In As You Like It, Act 2, Scene 7, Jack says, And then he drew a dial from his poke, and looking on it with lackluster eyes, says very wisely, It's 10 o'clock. There's a lot of history packed into this reference to sundials, but let's start with what's practical. One way that people used to tell the time of the day in Shakespeare's lifetime was using the sundial. And you've seen it. It's this large disc that has, a, it's actually called a gnomon, but the stick part that sticks up out of the middle and the sun shines on it and the stick casts a shadow. And all around the outside of the dial, there are marks on it to mark the hours of the day. And as the sun travels through the sky, it casts a shadow and the shadow shines onto the marks of the hours to tell you what time of day it is. Now there are a couple of problems with the sundial as the earth doesn't move in a circle and is in fact oblong. So there is a long history of the sundial having to be updated or adjusted because it wasn't accurate. In an article I read actually on Wikipedia, but they do have the citations there, it says that A sundial can only indicate local solar time only because of this difference with the Earth's movement. In fact, we think of Greenwich as being the source of all good time, and there is actually an uncorrected sundial located just west of Greenwich, England, but within the same time zone that shows an earlier time than the official time. And that's because the solar time has to be corrected for the longitude of the sundial to match up with the longitude of the official time zone. So this sundial could be corrected if the design of the sundial itself was updated. And there are some sundials that have been given this update to fix it, but probably for William Shakespeare's lifetime, the sundials were, like most of the clocks in 15th and 16th century England, incredibly unreliable. Interestingly, noticing that the sun moves across the sky as a way to tell the time is one reason that cowboys in West movies or Westerns will say that it's high noon when the sun is directly overhead, as cowboys don't feature in the story of Shakespeare. We'll have to save that story for another day. Now, one limiting factor, obviously, of the sundial is that it's only useful when you have the sun. And that means when the sun goes down, then you can't really tell time anymore. And that's why in the 15th and 16th century, there was this massive industry boom of people trying to solve that problem. And they created a lot of different clocks that could tell time at night. Now, of course, you had things like water clocks, which were much, much older, and they don't use the sun, they use water. You also had hourglasses. And we'll take a look at some of those in future episodes. But what was unique in preceding Shakespeare's lifetime was the invention of the mechanisms that make mechanical clocks work. They finally figured that out about 1300, so about 200 years or so, probably more like 250. But in the 1300s in Europe, they developed the mechanical part of the mechanical clock, the inside gears and switches that makes it quick, 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 you know. They made that, and that allowed them to build off of that into working mechanical clocks. And so there were a lot of people all over Europe in William Shakespeare's lifetime who were trying to create these kinds of clocks. They didn't actually get good at it to where the clocks were accurate until well after William Shakespeare's lifetime. So one unique aspect of the Bard's 52 years, and that should be taken into account when you read about time in his plays, is that time for William Shakespeare was not reliable. It wasn't steady. It wasn't accurate. It wasn't something you could fully know. And so all of the references to time and the passages of the days and the years and things was a relative, fluid, 
uncertain experience for people like Shakespeare and for the characters in his plays. Now, William Shakespeare would have had access to things like pocket watches and spring-driven clocks actually appeared for the first time in the 15th century. And there were ring clocks and things like that that existed. And we talk with William Massena, who is a trustee on the board of the Orological Society of New York, about the history of clocks in William Shakespeare's lifetime. You can find a link to that inside episode 69 of That Shakespeare Life, which is actually the upcoming episode. It will land on the blog and iTunes, Google Play, and the Tudor, Tudor Radio Network on Monday. So if you're not already subscribed to That Shakespeare Life, be sure that you hop over to iTunes and subscribe to That Shakespeare Life, or you can go to castacash.com slash That Shakespeare Life. I'll put the link at the bottom of the video, and of course, I'll link to it in the show notes for today's Did Shakespeare video if you would like to go check out the show notes and listen to that episode. My favorite reference two sundials in William Shakespeare's plays is the one I just read you from As You Like It, where he says, and then he drew a dial from his poke, which is another word for pocket, and looking on it with lackluster eyes says very wisely, it's 10 o'clock. This is fun because it references a very unique kind of sundial that was present in William Shakespeare's lifetime. And it was such a popular object. Elizabeth I is said to have even had one of these ring dials. And what it is, is it's just a little ring. It looks exactly like a ring you would wear on your finger. And the end side of the ring is engraved with the markings for the hours. And you could get it out and hold it up to the sun. And the sun would shine through a hole and cast a shadow onto the markings inside the ring. So you could tell what the time of the day was. And so Jacques in As You Like It is carrying, is talking about the fool carrying one of these in his pocket. And so this kind of sundial was an everyday object for William Shakespeare. And the comparison that I think of is from the Flintstones. If you've ever watched the Flintstones cartoon, it's set in the Stone Age. And one of the ways that they tell time is with sundials because the clocks haven't been invented yet. And so Fred Flintstone will often tell the time by holding his arm up and looking at a sundial on his arm to tell the time. Now that's a joke in context of the cartoon, but for William Shakespeare, that's kind of the way it was. They used sundials that way. It was this everyday object. People didn't have an understanding of the future of clocks that was coming for them. It wouldn't really become this normal part of life to have this kind of reliable mechanical clock carried around in your pocket or on your wrist and certainly not you know the iphones and things like that for william shakespeare the sundial was a legitimate popular everyday sort of object that people would use to tell the time of the day during the day. Now, I mentioned that the sundial was placed inside a Tudor knot garden, and not everyone would have a Tudor knot garden because they were pretty upper class features. In fact, having one was a way to show your status in society. It's one of the reasons William Shakespeare installed a Tudor knot garden at his home in New Place. He had become a gentleman, he'd established himself at his career in London, he was kind of a big shot. And so he was saying that he was this big established guy by putting putting in the Tudor knot garden in his yard. Now, for us Americans, a garden is basically their backyard. And people who weren't high enough status to have a Tudor knot garden might still have a sundial on their property because, as we mentioned, it was a way for people to tell time. Now, we don't know exactly when the first sundial was created. I went trying to find out who was the first to do this. And historians, depending on who you read, some people attribute the first sundial to the Egyptians. Other people say that it was the Romans. And originally, I thought that the Tudor Knot Gardens featured a sundial because it harkened back to the Romans and the Greeks, which is an overall theme of Tudor Knot Gardens in general. But it turns out people in Shakespeare's lifetime actually did include the Tudor Knot Garden with a sundial specifically to tell the time. It was there to be functional for the owners of the home. As a side note, I would like to mention on this map of the Roman Empire that the Illyrians, you can see them over there, that is a real that is a real place. And the Isle of Illyria is not purely a fictional place when it shows up in Twelfth Night. It was actually a region of land off the coast of the Adriatic Sea, north of what is modern Albania. And it was under the control of the Venetian Republic. And you can see in this map all those little islands off the coast of Illyria. It was kind of the perfect setting for William Shakespeare to go, yeah, one of those. That's where this play happened. So 
since I actually heard a dramaturg introduce Twelfth Night by saying you were being invited to this make-believe place, I thought I would point out that it is fictional in the sense that the precise island that Shakespeare picked doesn't exist, but Illyria was a real place and there was a real history he was wanting the audience to connect with when he chose that. So going into exactly the history of Illyria is another episode, but since I'm showing you this map of the Roman Empire, I thought I would take this moment to mention Illyria, real history fact there. We'll explore that in another episode of Did Shakespeare. When it comes to sundials, William Shakespeare would have absolutely had one. And we do talk about the sundial at Shakespeare's new place with the head of gardens from Shakespeare Birthplace Trust, Glenn Jones. Very nice man, knows everything there is to know about Tudor Knot Gardens and the sundial Shakespeare would have had. They focused very, very specifically on being historically accurate when they built the Tudor Knot Gardens there at New Place. And he tells you about how it was this historical accuracy that led them to include a sundial when they put the one that is there today. You can hear that story inside episode 12 of That Shakespeare Life. And the link for that is castycash.com slash episode 12. You can type that into your URL bar or you can visit the show notes for today's Did Shakespeare. So while the sundial was useful and an elegant decoration for gardens of the day, at night you weren't able to tell what time it was, but there were other options that you could use like pocket watches and ring watches. And there was actually a candle clock, which would melt at a certain rate and had tick marks on it. So you could tell what time it was based on how far the candle had burned down. That was also there in William Shakespeare's lifetime. As far as the ring dial that Jacques mentions in As You Like It, Shakespeare Birthplace Trust actually has one of these that dates to 1600. And I don't have permission to show you the image inside my video, but I will link to their article in the show notes for today's episode. And they have pictures of this. And you can go visit if you're in Stratford-upon-Avon, you can go see this on display at their museums there. This is part of their collections. And it dates to exactly the time that William Shakespeare was writing these lines for these plays. As You Like It was written around 1599 and the ring itself dates to 1600. So this is exactly the kind of thing that Shakespeare was talking about when he wrote those lines. So make sure you check out the article for that. That's it for this week here at Did Shakespeare. Be sure to come back next week because we're going to be going through all kinds of clocks for the month of August here at Did Shakespeare. Coming up next are watches. That's right. There were actual pocket watches in William Shakespeare's lifetime, but William Shakespeare himself probably did not wear one. Come back next week to find out why. You don't want to miss this, so make sure you subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell to be notified when the new episode comes available. Until next time, I'm Cassidy Cash, that's Shakespeare Girl, and I hope you learn something new about the Bard. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.